This is the key to problems 35 through 38. And in number 35, you're given the graph of a function. And this is a function f of x. And you want to find the domain, the range, f of 4, and the intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing. All right, so let's talk about the domain. So remember, the domain is the set of x coordinates, the x values that's on this, this function, on this graph. So, um, so for every point on this graph, you're interested in determining what are those x values. Okay, now notice on this function, there's a closed circle here and an arrow here. Okay, so, so both of those things do affect the domain as well as the range. All right, but let's talk about the domain. So remember, the domain is a set of x coordinates. And remember, when we talk about x, the, the domain, always go along the x-axis from left to right. Because remember, we are interested in the interval. And when we talk about interval, we always go from smallest to largest. All right, now, notice as, as I go from left to right, I start touching the graph at this closed circle. And that's a, um, let's see, that's a negative 6, by the way. That's negative 6. So, so this point here, just to let you know, this point, if you label it, is negative 6, comma, negative 6. So the x value is negative 6, and the y value is negative 6. So, so as I go from left to right, this, um, uh, my domain is going to start at negative 6, my x value, negative 6, because negative 6 is on, is, is, is on this closed circle. So, so every point... Notice as, as I go along the, the, um, the graph, every x value, every x value on this graph is going to consist from um, negative 6 all the way, all, just keep in mind that it's all irrational numbers, all rational numbers. Don't just think of, of these integers here. It's all the numbers between them as well, and there's an infinite number of these. All right, so you're going from negative infinity all the way, and then you see all these x values that's on this that's on this this x-axis is going to be part of this graph. So you're going from negative six, negative six, all the way to, and you just remember this arrow means you keep on going, right? So all the way to to infinity. So that's your domain. So the domain is going to be domain will be um, negative. Um, um, negative 6, comma, oh, I'm bracket, by the way, bracket, so bracket, don't forget, closed circle, negative 6 is part of the domain, so bracket, comma, all the way to infinity. Now, some students get confused. They see this arrow pointing down towards the, towards the um, negative values on the y-axis, so they want to say negative infinity. you got to be careful, all right, where you're looking at the x values. So if you're at this point here, that x value is positive, right? All right, so be careful. Don't don't um, get confused here. You're going from negative 6 all the way to positive infinity. No matter how, if you keep on extending this, all these x values are positive. The y values are negative. That's true. Those y values are negative, but my x values are positive. They're getting larger and larger and larger, okay? All right, so infinity. And remember, whenever you, you, you're you using infinity, negative infinity, you're always going to denote that with a parenthesis. All right, so that's your domain. Now let's talk about the range. The range is the set of y values. So that's where we're going to go from uh, along the y-axis. So domain, you go along the x-axis. The um, range, you go along the, the uh, y-axis. Now, here's where some students get confused. They go along the y-axis, and, and they notice that, that and, and this is what they say incorrectly, they say this. They say, all right, well, this is where, where my, um, my graph starts, all right? And they want to say that, that the, the range is at y value, which is negative 6, all the way to this y value here, which is the highest point. That's incorrect. That is not correct. The reason it's not correct is because look at this arrow. This arrow means that this, this graph keeps on going like this, right? So this is not the lowest point. In fact, there is no lowest point. It just keeps on going down further and further and further. So when talking about the range, so sometimes you're going to have to extend this to help you understand um, what's going on here. 
So you're going from negative infinity, see all these y values are negative, you're going negative 100, negative 1000, negative 1 million, and so on. So you're going from negative infinity all the way to, and then um, just to let you know, this is a 6 here. So so all the way to 6, and, and notice that's a closed circle, all these, all these points, all these points on the graph can be considered closed circles. Um, okay, so from negative infinity all the way to 6 with a bracket. So negative infinity, remember infinity, negative infinity is always parentheses, 6 with a bracket. Alright, now you want to find f of 4. So f of 4, to find f of 4 you're asking yourself what is the y value when x is 4? So locate x equal 4 on the x-axis and then and then determine where that point is on the graph. So here's where x equal 4, the point it corresponds to is right here. Label it. It helps if you label it. That point here is 4 comma 3. So therefore you know the answer. When x is 4, my y value is 3. So the answer is going to be 3. That's your answer. All right, then you want to find the intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing. Now remember to determine that, you're, you're always, you always trace your graph from left to right. So as I go from left to right, and by the way, when, when you're asking the intervals where the function is, is increasing or decreasing, you're asking yourself, you're asking yourself this, um, for what values of x, for what values of x of the domain, what values of the domain or my or the y values increasing decreasing or constant okay that's what you're asking for what values of the domain are the y values increasing decreasing or constant all right so so as you go along the graph now listen to what I'm saying my y values are increasing right here, right? They're increasing. Hope you see this, because notice this y value is negative 6, this y value is right here is negative 4, this, this y value is negative 2, um, this y value is 1, and so on. So those y values are, are increasing. And then as I go down here, those y values are decreasing. Okay, now, you got you got to determine, though, the values of x for which that is happening. So when you say increasing, and whenever you, you discuss increasing or decreasing or constant, it's always open intervals. Alright, so just keep that in mind, open intervals. So in other words, we're going to use parentheses throughout. The only time you're going to worry about brackets and parentheses, combination of those, um, for right now, is when we're talking about domain and range. Alright, so listen to what I'm going to do now. So as I go from from left to right, my y values are increasing. Then all of a sudden, they are decreasing. It helps. It helps if you have a different color pen where I'm using red and you may not see the red, but if you're using a different color pen and you're denoting that from this interval to this interval here, so from x equals 6 to um, x equal 2, my y, my function is increasing. So it's increasing here. And it helps to do that. It helps to write it out. Okay? And then from, from um, x equal 2 right here all the way to infinity, my y values are um, decreasing. Okay? So from and be careful, don't say, don't say negative infinity because this is where your graph starts. Alright, so, so from x equal negative 6 all the way to x equal, and that's a 2, my function is increasing. And all the way from 2 to infinity, my function is decreasing. Alright, so increasing from, um, and, and, and let me write the word decreasing here, decreasing. Alright. So increasing from, and remember open intervals, don't worry about brackets here, so open intervals from negative 6 to 2, so negative 6 to 2, and then decreasing, 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 and you're decreasing from, 
and you're going to start from 2 to infinity. All right, so 2, okay, 2 to infinity. All right, all right, so that was number 35. Okay, let's look at 36. Okay, so 36, same kind of idea. You're, you're given this function, g of x, and you want to find the domain, the range, or the x-intercept, and whether there's a local maximum value. And, and when um, and when I ask you to find the local maximum value, um, I'm interested in the y value. And then the local minimum value, again, I'm interested in the y value. And the interval is where the function uh, is, is increasing or decreasing. All right, so let's talk about the domain. All right, so the domain, now notice in this case you have arrows, right? Arrows, on one side is pointing up, on the other side is pointing left. On the right side is pointing up, on the left side is pointing down. All right, so that means that it's going to keep on going like this. I hope you see that, okay, like this. That's not a straight line, but it's a curve. But but um, I did that for, for um, um, so you can visually see what's happening. All right, so you're going from negative infinity, negative infinity, and just keeps on going, right, to positive infinity. So that's your domain, negative infinity, positive infinity. So whenever you use infinity, negative infinity, it's always parentheses. The range, you're going to go on the y-axis. Notice this arrow keeps pointing down. So your range is going from negative infinity all the way, and there's never a high point, just keeps on going, all the way to infinity. So the range, negative infinity to infinity. All right, so the x-intercept, and I'm, um, you, unless otherwise indicated, um, um, write the x-intercept as an ordered pair. So, so the x-intercept, remember, is where the graph crosses the x-axis. That's here. So that's at negative 5. So you're going to say negative 5, 0, the ordered pair. Okay, so local max, local min. Now, th this is a continuous function. A polynomial this is a continuous polynomial there are no breaks in this graph so as you go from from left to right I want you to notice something so when 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 given a smooth curve like this when given a smooth curve like this it's very easy to determine what the local maximum value the local minimum value is so when you think of local maximum you're thinking of increasing then decreasing and so this would be a local uh, maximum point the local maximum meaning within a um, uh, within a small area is there a maximum point within a small area is there a maximum or minimum point all right and then local minimum remember is where you're going from decreasing to increasing and so this point here would be a a local minimum point all right but here I'm asking for the value, so you're gonna you're gonna indicate the y value. So so this right here, this point here is a local um, maximum, right? And then the question is, what is that y value? Well, that y value is five. So that y value is five. So you're gonna say the the local maximum value is five. Okay. All right. Then the local minimum value. You're going to remember the y value. So there's where I have a local minimum. I'm decreasing and then increasing. So that's your local um, minimum. And so the local minimum value is this y value, which is, is 1. Okay. All right. Then you want to find out where the function is increasing or decreasing. All right. So increasing and then decreasing, right? Okay, now notice as I go from left to right, as I go from left to right, notice this arrow. So as I go from left to right, it is my my y values are increasing, right? And then all of a sudden they're decreasing. All right, so denote that. So from and remember there's an arrow, so 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 think of this as negative infinity here. All right, so that's an arrow, it just keeps them going down. So negative infinity, and then all of a sudden, right here, right here, is where um, my, y, my y values change. So I go from from uh, increasing to decreasing. So this is increasing, right? And then I am um, going down. My y values are decreasing here. And then all of a sudden they increase. So decrease here. 
Okay, and then all of a sudden they increase, so increase here, right? Okay, but now you want to indicate the, the intervals. Before we go on, notice that there are two intervals where we're increasing. And by the way, this is an error right here, so so I know you can't see this very well, but but that interval, you're going to say all the way to infinity. So from negative infinity to um, negative 2, I'm increasing. From negative 2 to 1, from negative 2, see this point here to this point here, you got to look at the, the domain though. That x coordinate is negative 2, that x coordinate is 1. And then from 1 to infinity, my y values are increasing. Alright, so how do you write it when there are more than one interval? Here's what you do. So you're going to say parentheses negative infinity to negative 2. Remember, whenever you talk about increasing, decreasing, or constant, it's always those open intervals. Union, because there are two of them, right? So union, and then from, um, that's a 1 right here, all, all the way to infinity. So union 1 to infinity. And then it's decreasing only in one interval, and that's from 2 to 1. From 2 to 1. I'm sorry, not into 2, I'm sorry, negative 2, excuse me. Negative 2 to 1. So from negative 2 to 1, um, that's where it's decreasing. From x equal negative 2 to x equal 1, my y values are decreasing. Okay? Alright, so that was number 36. Okay, let's look at 37. So 37, you're given um, g of x, this function. Notice this is an open circle, this is an arrow in this end. All right. Um, just as before, you want to find the domain. So let's go ahead and put the domain here. Domain. All right. So remember the domain. You go from left to right. So let's go from left to right. I'm some. Uh, remember, there's no arrow on this side. There's only an arrow on this side. But there's an open circle here. So I'm going to start touching the graph when I'm at x equal negative seven. But that's an open circle, right? So that's a, that's going to be parentheses. I'm going to say parentheses negative seven comma all the way to infinity because this arrow keeps on going all the way to infinity. The range. So the range is a set of y uh, coordinates. Now remember just like in the previous problem be careful uh, it doesn't start at negative 7 because remember this arrow is going down right? I mean this 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 graph is going down. So you're really going from negative infinity all the way and here's the high point. The highest point on the graph is where y is and that's a 6. Y is 6. And, and that is a closed circle. There's no open circle here. So you're going to say domain, uh, range will be from negative infinity to 6 with a bracket. Okay? All right. And then you want to find g of negative 3. So g of negative 3, remember, what is the y coordinate when, when x is negative 3? So here's, here's where x equals negative 3. Locate the point associated with it. That's this point right here. Okay? Label it negative 3, negative 4, and now you can answer the question. So what is the y value when x is negative 3? When x is negative 3, my y value equals negative 4. Okay? Um, and then this one, where's the f uh, uh, function increasing, decreasing, or constant? Before we do that, let's look at e. Let's do e. So the question is, does g of 100 exist? And you may say, well, I don't know because it only goes up to 9. Yeah, you do. So remember, Remember that my question is just hypothetically, if if um, x equal remember g of 100 means the y what's the y value when x is 100 right? So when x is 100, am I going to go point the graph? Yes, I will. So is there a y value? Yes, there is. You don't know what it is, but there is a y value. So the answer is yes. Okay, yes, since there is a y value, since there is a point associated on the graph, meaning there's a y value. Okay, what about g of negative 100? Alright, so remember g of negative 100, if you, if you just kind of extend this and say this is 100, negative 100, question is, is there a point in the graph? Is there a y value associated um, to x equal negative 100. I'm hoping you see that there is none, right? Because this is where the graph starts, right here. There is no point of the graph, there is no point of the graph associated um, with x equal negative 100. There is no y value. 
your remember your your um, um, domain starts from x equal negative seven. X equal negative one one hundred is not in the domain, right? So so you would say something like this. Um, well, first of all, the answer is no, and you would say something like, well, since since x equal negative one hundred is not in the domain is not in the domain. Um, g of negative 100 does not exist. Okay? All right, then look at g of negative 7. What about g of negative 7? All right, well, I see an x equal negative 7, right? And then ask yourself, is negative 7 in that domain? See, 100, x equal 100 is in my domain, right? I'm going from negative 7 all the way to infinity. 100 is in here. You can even see that, that, that there will be a point in the graph. But then ask yourself, is, is negative 7 in the domain? You may say, well, I see it here, so yes, it is in the domain. Well, remember, though, if it is in the domain, you should have used a bracket, right? There's a parenthesis here. So meaning that this open circle here, this point is not part of the, the graph. So that means that, that this, this point here, negative 7, negative 7, um, x equal negative 7, is not in the domain. Okay, so so uh, g of negative seven. Let me put that here. G of negative seven. You're gonna say um, the answer is no, since x equal negative seven is not in the domain. All right. So that that was well. I forgot about d. So let's now do d. All right. So d. You're asked to find. Um, and let me go ahead and get another sheet of paper. All right, so let's let's um, talk about. Um, let me see if I can. Well, I was going to try and make it smaller, but then you may not see some of those numbers. You can barely see it now. All right, so let's determine where the function is increasing. Um, decreasing and constant. All right, now again, it helps. It helps if you use a, a different color with, with these. So let me see if I can get a, um, some different markers. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and use some highlighters. Um, OK, so notice. Notice as I go, and remember, the, this is not an arrow. This is an arrow. This is not. So as I go from from left to right, notice your y values. So my y values are are um, increasing. And remember, you, your the the um, values you put here though are the x values, the values of the domain. So what values of the domain are my y values increasing? So from here, from here to here, okay, it's my y values are increasing, right? So I'm going to put the word increase, okay? And then from here to here, your y values are all the same, so your y values are constant. So from, from here to here, from here to here, and I'm going to go ahead and just use a different color for, for the word. Um, there, my y values are constant. Okay, and then from here to here, those y values are increasing, right? So from here to here, they are increasing. So I'm going to use the same color for increase. Okay, and then from here to here, and that's, remember, that's an arrow, keeps them going. So from, from here to here, meaning um, and let me just just kind of do this first. So from here to here, my y values are decreasing. Y'all agree with that, right? Okay, decreasing. So they're decreasing. Okay, now um, I'm going to then shade in the x-axis with those different colors. All right. So so increasing. So my y values are increasing when my x values are from negative seven to negative four. Okay. My y values are constant from negative 4 to negative 1. 
So so remember the the uh, intervals you put here are the domain, the values of x for which my y values are increasing. So that's why it's a good idea if you if this confuses you this idea, this concept confuses you to kind of make shading the x-axis to match the word you just put here. Your y values are increasing, that's what that means, and then the x values that, that it's increasing in is from negative 7 to 4. Here my y values are constant, that's what this is, right? The constant, and the x values for which they're constant is from negative 4 to, and that's a negative 1. And then um, they're increasing again, and they're increasing from x equal negative 1 to x equal, and that's a positive 1. And then, now, here's where you need to be careful. So, so here, my y values are decreasing, and they're decreasing from x equal 1 all the way, all the way to um, infinity, okay? All the way to infinity. All right, now, let's, let's write all this down, right? So there are two intervals where, where I'm increasing, one interval where I'm constant, one interval where I'm decreasing. So let's do the increasing first. So I'm increasing from x equal negative 7, and that's a negative 4 right here. I can say negative 7 comma negative 4 union, and then from negative 1 to positive 1. So negative 1, positive 1. My y values are constant when x is, is between negative 4 and negative 1. So negative 4, negative 1. And then your, um, oops, I put the wrong place, did I? So negative 4, negative 1, sorry. And then decreasing from 1 to infinity. All right, now I want you to notice. So remember, the domain went from negative, infinity, negative 7 to infinity, right? So all of this right here has to be part of this. So notice, negative Neg so remember the domain is from here to here. So from negative 7 to negative 4, I am increasing. From negative 4 to negative 1, I am uh, constant. And then from negative 1 to, to um, positive 1, I am increasing. And then from 1 to infinity, I am um, decreasing. So when you put all these intervals together, you're going to get this domain here. All of this is inside that domain. So that domain encompasses all of this. Okay? All right. And I think that was it. So that was letter D, by the way. Um, and so that consists of numbers 35, 36, and 37.